Hey guys, hope all of you are doing good. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Power BI video. In the last video, I had explained you how do you import data from a CSV file into Power BI. In today's video, we are going to check four to five interesting Power BI DAX functions, the syntax for that and what data or what kind of information you can extract using those functions. Let's get started right away with the video. As you see here, I've already imported a new data set. It has the date column, the category. Category is basically the category of the dress or some accessory, like you have belts, armbands, caps, shoe socks, etc. Then I also have the normal marketing metrics, right? So clicks, impressions, conversions, cost and conversion value, all right? The first function that we are gonna to see today it is called as switch, okay? Switch is an interesting DAX function. So imagine a use case where you want to categorize whichever rows have cost greater than 5,000 as above 5,000, which have cost greater than 3,000 but less than 5,000 as above 3,000 and the remaining whichever have value below 3,000 as below 3,000, okay? Imagine you wanted to create a new calculated column like this we could leverage the switch function to do this, okay? What I would do is I would go here, go to the new column, I'll click on that. So new column will be added and now I define the syntax. So I will say, I give it a name, cost threshold, okay? I'll just give it a random name. And how the function switch works is, I would type switch first, okay? Switch. Since it's going to be a logical sequence, I will put true here as the first argument. And now comes the conditions, okay? As I told you, wherever it is greater than 5,000, I want to call it above 5,000, right? So I would just type the name of the column where I want to include the logical condition. So it's the cost column in the sheet one table, right? This whole table is called sheet one. So wherever it is greater than 5,000, right? Then I put a comma and I say above 5,000, right? I just give it a name, put another comma. The second condition is wherever it is greater than 3,000, right? I give it a name above 3,000, okay? Then finally, the other condition, wherever it is below 3,000, I wanna give it a name below 3,000. So since we've already given above 5,000 and 3,000 as conditions, the default value at the end can be below 3000. So whenever the first two conditions don't apply, it will automatically give it the value below 3000, okay? So I will close it. I will press on enter. It will take a couple of seconds, but we will get the value. And now we can check, so above 5000, why is it above 5000? Because yes, cost value is 5700. Let's check a random value, so this is above 3000, right? Because it's it's more than 3000, but it's less than 5000. Let's check this value. So it is 1000 something. So obviously it has to be below 3000. So our function is working, right? So switch powerful function we can use to do these kind of categorization. So it, it is kind of similar to the case function in SQL. If you have seen my SQL videos, okay. This was the first thing I wanted to show you guys. Now let us do one more thing. Suppose you wanted to see the sum of clicks, but at a category level, right? How would we usually do it? So what you could potentially do is you could go to, you know, the visualization tab. And for example, I would just select, say this one, like a random table and I could just pull category and uh, sum of clicks, right? So now we can see, okay, so armbands has a total number of clicks as 20,727, earrings has 10,327 and so on, okay? So we have these values. But suppose you wanted to see these values in the original table itself, is it possible to do it in Power BI? Yes, we can do it. So just keep this number in mind. For example, armbands, it says 20,727 is the total clicks, okay? So let me now go back to the data. I will create a new column, okay. And I'll give it a name, category clicks.
okay so what we are going to do here is we are going to use the calculate function in power bi so i would say calculate okay and what we want to do is we just want to do the sum of the clicks value here right cool that is done put a comma but we want to do it at a category level right for this particular application we have another option in power bi which is called as all except okay so what you would do is you would write all except then put the name of the table then the column on which you know you want to actually do the slicing so here i want to do the slicing on category right so after saying calculate open bracket you want to say the calculation you want to do which is sum of clicks here put another comma then type all except open bracket first argument is the name of the table second argument is the column on which you want to do the slicing okay close that bracket and close the main bracket of calculate okay so this is called category clicks so now when i run this let me type enter let's see what happens now we get these values okay so what happens is wherever it spans you're getting 259342 as you see here and remember i told you to remember arm bands where is arm bands so arm bands as you see wherever we have arm bands it is 2727 if i go back to the table here arm bands was 2727 right and caps for example 17665 so here if i scroll down and see caps for example caps we get 17665 so what this full calculation is doing is it is calculating the sum of clicks and by leveraging the all except function we are applying a filter or slicing at the category level right so it is doing the sum of clicks but only per category okay so wherever we see arm bands it will show the sum of clicks only for the arm band category which is 2727 so powerful use case again uh, it's it's pretty good when you want to do all this kind of slicing so remember calculate plus all except is a killer combo okay now moving on to the third function let me go here suppose we wanted to do something similar like we you know we wanted to see the sum of clicks but only for a specific category say only for pants how we could do it in power bi is here you could create a new measure okay so you would say new measure i would give it a name say pants clicks okay i'll just give it a random name and it will be pretty similar but we are calculating a measure here so we'll say calculate of what do you want to do i want to do sum of sheet one of clicks only same thing but i want to apply filter only for the category pants so what we could do is we could leverage the filter function so you type filter open bracket which table again table is uh, sheet one it's the same table and the condition here is so sheet one of category right that's what we want should be is equal to and in double quotes you can put pants okay so calculate of sum of clicks and you put a filter and say uh, sheet 1 right in the table and sheet 1 of category right has to be equal to pants let me close the bracket for the sum here and then yeah the final bracket for filter we can close and then the bracket for calculate and now i can just enter okay i think there was already something created so i'll say pants clicks new let's see what's happening cool so pants clicks new has been created let me just pull a new table here and i'll just drag pants clicks new okay so it says 259342 right what is happening is it is doing sum of clicks only filter for pant category so we get this value which is same as the value we have here as you see right so to revisit the formula again this is another killer combo so you can do a calculation and do a aggregate function like sum or average for a column then apply a filter condition right after that so this was a third thing i wanted to teach you today another very useful and interesting function okay moving on to another interesting use case let me go back to the table so again you see here we have the values for dates right 
if you go inside and see there is something surprising here so i have august 24 25 26 27 28 29 31 september 1 2 but august 30 is missing right august 30 value is missing say we wanted another use case right for for each day we also wanted to compare it to the previous day clicks right like so for example on august 25 we know the sum of clicks is something beside that we want another value which shows the sum of clicks for the previous day previous day meaning august 24th how would we do that in power bi again i will demonstrate that to you using a new measure okay so let me drag this out okay for now i will just put date here and in date do remember to click and click on just date so that you just get the date instead of this year quarter month day kind of setup so you just click on date i will drag the clicks so it will do sum of clicks so for each day we have the sum of clicks right now i wanted to see previous day clicks for for example on august 25 clicks was 53457 previous day clicks is 47965 as we can see here but i want to see it beside this for that we can create a new measure click on new measure i'll give it a name previous clicks okay put is equal to and we could say calculate again it's the same logic you want to do a sum of sheet one of clicks value only but the condition here is i want to apply the previous day condition okay so he, here after the bracket we could say previous day there is a function called previous day in power bi and what previous day of what do you want to see sheet one of date right so i want to see the sum of clicks but for the previous day value so i will close this and i'll close the calculate and yeah i will run this it should work okay so previous clicks is there so i can just remove this and just one sec i'll go back here and i can drag previous clicks here just make it a bit wider and now you can see so for august 25 5, 3, 4, 5, 7 is the clicks the previous day august 24 ka clicks was 47965 we have it beside that right similarly for each okay but for august 31 we do not have a previous day value why can anyone guess that is because the previous day of august 31 is august 30 and august 30 does not have value in our data set which is why this part is blank similarly august 24 was the first date in our data set so there is no previous value which is why it is left blank so when i click on previous clicks again just to revisit the formula so you just do a calculate of sum of clicks and the condition is you want to do it for the previous day for the date column in that table okay so another powerful function so to just refresh today what all did we see so i taught you the switch function the calculate function right in combination with all except then i also taught you calculate in combination with the filter function and finally i taught you how to do the sum of clicks or get a value for the previous date right so i use the previous day function very powerful functions hope you all enjoyed the video i will see you again in another video till then take care bye